All right, thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Anand, I'm with Route 6 Technology, and I'm here to show some of the latest features of Content Agent. Um, we really think we can help with your workflows, both with Avid ingest and delivery. Um, so stay tuned and uh, thanks for attending again. So we're looking right now at the Content Agent UI. Um, it's really simple to use user interface, um, designed for both technical and non-technical operators. This is kind of a window view of our database and uh, as you can see on the right, there's a variety of camera cards that I've imported into our store. Uh, we have one of the widest variety of camera cards supported um, in the industry, and we're really proud of that. So on the right, you can see formats such as Sony a7S, GoPro, uh, Osmo cams, drone cams, Canon 5D, 70, etc. And the really handy part is we can uh, handle all those in a very similar fashion. Um, and again, whether it's 4K, UHD, HD, or even SD media, a simple to use workflow can be designed to manage all that seamlessly. Um, so just to browse through the top briefly, we have our store tab, we have our import tab where you can easily bring media in. Um, we have the facility to burn DVDs and Blu-rays. You have your jobs tab whereby you can manage your job queue. Um, currently I'm sitting on a single job agent which is my processing engine, but I could easily have a farm where I have multiple job agents connected, all processing media simultaneously. Lastly, we have our watch tab, in which way we are able to ingest media through watch folders. So going back to our store briefly, if I were to look at one of these camera cards, for example, this XTCAM HD card, you'll see that we recognize all the clips on the card. I can view metadata of the individual clips on the card itself. I can see where it came from. I can see audio channels, bit rate, video profiles, et cetera. And then I can also see um, extended media about the card if it exists. So if I look at a different example, such as uh, a GoPro card here, I can see uh, camera information, et cetera, in a really easy to read fashion. Lastly, all these camera cards are, in my store, are raw camera structures from a camera card or disc recorder. So again, as long as the structure is unaltered, we will be able to recognize that really easily. Um, the real heart of Content Agent um, is its workflow designer. So if I go to my workflows folder, on the right I have a wide variety of workflows. Some of these are pertaining to ingest, some of them delivery, some of them can be both. Um, but just to give you a quick example of a very simple workflow, here is a non-interplay Avid ingest workflow. And we're doing a couple things here. So we are examining the source media. We're splitting up the card into its individual clips. We're using Platinum, our proprietary transcoding engine, to create the OP Atom media. We're reassembling those clips, making a sequence, and then pushing an AAF out to your shared storage. The more interesting nodes in this workflow are Platinum. So if I open up Platinum, you can see all the codecs that are available. So just to give you some of the highlights, we have the ability to encode H.265, J2K, a variety of image sequence formats, including OpenEXR. We can make ProRes, and we can make Avid Media. So as of the latest version 3.8, we've expanded our support for Avid Media formats. And by dropping down my codec selection, you can see all the codecs that we can create. And these include some of the more standard formats such as JFIF, XDCAM HD, DNX HD, et cetera. We also support DNX HR, as well as the latest um, AVC log op and XAVC codecs straight into Avid. So if I were to pick one of these codecs, I would then want to make sure my frame rate is correct, that I've chosen the correct bit depth, and if I'm in an interplay world, I can tick the multi-res box to make sure dynamic relink is enabled. In a non-interplay world, I'm gonna write straight to my Nexus. One of the unique features that Route 6 offers is the ability to create your database PMR file um, within a standalone media composer environment, meaning you do not need a system to index that media. As soon as we write the AAF and you drag it into your bin, the media will be online. So you can see here I'm writing to the Content Agent folder. Along the top, you have a variety of options as well. 
such as the ability to crop and pad. I can map my audio channels very easily. I can add graphic overlays if needed. I can do frame rate conversion, burn-ins. I can apply a lookup table on my transcode. And in version 3.8, we also have a legalization option. Version 3.8 is scheduled for release uh, towards NAB this year. Once I've set up my profile, I simply hit save and my workflow is ready to go. So I have a few different ways I can apply that workflow. Let's take a look at a slightly different workflow briefly, uh, whereby we are looking at using card agent. So again, a very similar workflow, but this time we're making a decision based off frame size. And depending on that frame size, we're gonna make the appropriate output format. So we're making DVC Pro or ProRes. We're generating an XML containing metadata and then pushing that XML to a third-party MAM. The key note in this workflow is our metadata injection in which a form has been set up. And if I now look at Card Agent, you can see what else we have to offer. So Card Agent is a uh, external GUI designed for a client uh, job submission. It can be run on an external PC and is designed for people that are less technical and um, are maybe more interested in just getting media into the system without the complicated um, steps involved with other similar products. So on the left, I can just scan a volume and you'll see that as soon as it's done, you'll have all the cards that are recognized off that volume. You can then pick one of these cards. You can view the media on that card, play it very easily. You can add in and out points. And then if we refer back to the workflow that we had just made, which is called Card Agent Extended Metadata, you can then populate a form, which is fully customizable, which includes mandatory fields, drop downs, selections, et cetera. And once you're happy with that, you simply submit that to a Conchination workflow. And then back in Conchination, we have our job queued. And you can now see it running. We can see a preview of the workflow, two clips on this card. As it progresses through the steps, they will fill in green and it will decide what to do. Um, in the end, you end up with a AAF on your um, output folder. So here in my Z drive, I have an AAFs folder. And here's the AAFs that were generated by that workflow. If I look inside Media Composer, you have the clips that are resulting from the AAF with extra metadata. Um, and for example, we'll automatically add a card name column here as an example of our custom metadata handling. At this point, I can do my standard cut. So we can drag a few clips into our sequence. And once your sequence is ready, you can right click that sequence, hit output, send to content agent, and now you can actually choose a content agent workflow. And as of version 3.8, this send to plugin is supported on both Windows and Macintosh platforms. So here I'm gonna select a workflow, so maybe my deliverables workflow. If I look back in my content agent UI, you'll see that that deliverables workflow is simply a workflow that I've saved within content agent. So here are my two send to workflows. So any changes I make here would affect the workflow that's submitted to via Avid. And you'll see that here I'm making three different formats, uploading straight to YouTube, doing a QC pass, and then uploading via Spera. And again, all that can be triggered directly from my Media Composer UI by choosing that workflow and simply hitting OK. You now get a status window, it verifies connection back to content agent, and that job has been submitted. The job is running. And if I go back to my jobs tab, here's my new workflow, which is currently processing. Um, for those of you who have Interplay, the process is just as simple. 
So rather than creating an AAF separately, I could grab some media and then submit to a interplay workflow such as IP ingest, whereby I'm making multiple formats. So long as I have the multi-res box ticked, those formats will appear as a single clip dynamically linked within interplay. Here I can choose my output folder, and this is browsing your interplay folder tree directly. I can do things like create subfolders, and those can be based off metadata or static folders. And as soon as I submit this workflow, if I were to return to interplay access, you would end up with clips such as these within your interplay access or media central production management window. Um, and then to top that off, within our watch folders tab, we have the ability to monitor interplay folders. So here, rather than a standard watch folder or a card-based watch folder, we have interplay watch folders whereby I can associate a workflow with a folder in interplay. You could then pick a folder on one of your interplay systems, such as my root six folder. And then as soon as I drag in either a master clip sequence or both to that folder, it will trigger a workflow. So let's do that. Um, we'll hit save. And then within access, we could drag a clip in to the root six folder. It's automatically created our successful and unsuccessful folders. Um, and as easy as that, you can then trigger any workflow you're choosing, um, whether it's send to social media, make me XDCAM deliverables, or make me a wide variety of formats by making a new workflow, which is just as easy as submitting an existing one. Please feel free to contact Keycode Media uh, for any further questions, and we look forward to seeing everyone at NAB.